Hello all, my name is Claudia. When I was assigned to write a paper on Love and War, the first series that came to my mind was Cassandra Clare's The Mortal Instrument series. For those of you that don't know, the main character, Clarissa Frey, who is referred to as Clary throughout the series, goes to a nightclub with her best friend, Simon. Little did she know that the club, Pandemonium, is actually a club where downworlders go as well and that there were going to be shadow hunters fighting downworlders. Humans cannot see shadow hunters, since shadow hunters are part angel and have the ability to cloak themselves from human view using runes that they draw on their skin. When she is able to see them and panics about them trying to kill the demon, one of the shadow hunters... Jace is interested in the fact that she can see them and the demons. He keeps a watch of her, and they discover that Clary's mother was taken by her ex-husband, and demon dogs are in Clary's house. Clary gets attacked by one of them, and Jace saves her, and they are taken back to the institution. When they're at the institution, she discovers that she is a shadow hunter. The war aspect of this book is the conflict not only between Clary and her father, but also a conflict between downworlders, which downworlders are the fey creatures, werewolves, vampires, demons, and the conflict that shadow hunters have with them, which shadow hunters are part angel humans that fight to protect humans from downworld or harm and maintain peace. The term shadow hunter or the name shadow hunter may be familiar to some people because there's a show called Shadow Hunters which is based on the Mortal Instruments series. The book series that I chose to elaborate on the concepts of war in general is the series The Iron Fae series which is by Julie Kagawa, which has a similar concept to the Mortal Instruments, but it follows more of a traditional concept of war's effect on love, being as it's based on the realm of Fae that was created by William Shakespeare's uh, A Midsummer Night's Dream. Similar to how Clary discovers that she is a shadow hunter in the Mortal Instruments, the main character of the Iron Fae, series whose name is Megan Chase discovers that she is the daughter of Oberon and that she is the Seely princess of the Seely court and that her best friend who is Robbie Goodfell is actually Robin Goodfellow from Midsummer Night's Dream who is also referred to as Puck. After her father disappeared when she was at a young age her mother moved her to the country. She got a stepfather, and that stepfather created Ethan. And so they were living in the country together. And the father, her birth father, disappeared, which is Oberon, who took a human form and created Megan. When Ethan is taken and her mother is attacked because Robbie wasn't able to get her the special drink that was going to be used to help wipe her memory, Robbie has to tell her the truth that she is Oberon's daughter and that her brother was taken to the court, the fairy court, and of course she doesn't believe that the fairy court even exists. She was like, isn't that, isn't that like made up? Like, isn't that not real? But it is real. So she learns that her best friend, Puck, was sent by King Oberon to protect her from harm. So she has to go to the Unseely Court to go find her brother, who was taken. Which is dangerous, since she's the Seely Princess, and the Unseely don't really like, you know, Megan. But this concept is very similar to the Mortal Instruments series, which stars Clary, who has to go on a dangerous hunt for her mother who was taken by her father. Another reason why I chose these two art series to be spoken about together is because they both have family members that wipe the main character's memories to conceal their true identity, and in both cases the parents are doing it to protect the child. In Mortal Instruments, Clara gets her memory wiped by Magnus Bane at the order of Clary's mother to protect Clary from dangers 
that go along with being a shadow hunter and allows them to stay hidden from her ex-husband, who is actually the evil guy who took Clary's mother. Both also have these events occurring on or around their birth. Both main characters also fall in love with the guy that protects them, and their best friend wants to protect them from harm. In Mortal Instruments, Clary's best friend is Simon, who becomes a vampire to protect her. And in Iron Fae, Puck is sent from by Oberon to protect Megan. In the Iron Fae series, she falls in love with the prince of the Unseely Court, which is really unheard of, and is actually only helping her find her brother because she made a deal with him. You have to become a prisoner to the Unseely Court after we find him. So she agrees to that, so he's helping her, and during that whole process of him helping her, they fall in love with each other. This is similar to the Mortal Instruments series where Clary falls in love with Jace, but Jace is doing it because she is someone that he believes in. So there was something interesting about her that caught his interest, and because of that, they took interest in each other because she believed in him in the way that she's going to protect him and then he believed in her and he was the only one that trusted her um and they fell in love so really i made the argument in my paper that the whole reason why the mortal instrument series is so complicated when it comes to the subject of love and war is precisely because it's such an elaborate concept and the iron fae is a better interpretation of love and war because it's more traditional being as it is not only based in William Shakespeare's realm of the Fae and the Unseelie Court you know it's literal royalty and it's you know it gets to direct issues it's not multiple issues that go on and on and about oh now there's this issue now there's that issue whereas in the very beginning the first issue with the immortal instruments was that Clary had to find her mother then after she found her mother then she was fighting valentine which is her father then the next error or situation is that she's got to fight her brother her birth brother and then there's the issue of when she thinks that jace is her brother and not sebastian who is also named jonathan as well as uh jace is also named jonathan so there's just a lot of confusing concepts in the mortal instrument series that kind of makes it hard to really focus on the war aspect of it since it's really personal. And the Iron Fae series really focuses on the love during the wartime, which is she's constantly fighting to first she protects her brother and then after she finds her brother, she discovers that the world that her father is from that she's not familiar with which is the Unseely and Seely Court, they're in danger. So the war aspect is she needs to protect these warring civilizations that need to work together in order to fight this common enemy that they have. So you could see that for the Mortal Instruments series, it's very complex, and the Iron Fae series is really obvious, the love and war concept, which makes it a lot easier to compare the two. So that's exactly what I did, and I really enjoyed, you know, thinking about the way the Iron Face series, which I personally really enjoyed a lot more recently, so I'm more familiar with like, the enjoyment of reading the books compared to the Immortal Instruments series, which was very complex. I read it in high school. I read the whole series, and it took me a long time to really grasp the concepts that were in the story. And there was a lot to grasp, so I feel like for, like, when it comes to the two, it's a lot easier to think about the Iron Fae series as a concept of love and war, and you're able to enjoy the love's effect of war and the war's effect on love, whereas the mortal instruments you struck. But 
the mortal instruments is very fun when it comes to the ability to you know enjoy the drama associated with all the family issues and you're able to enjoy just the very spectacle of believing well not spectacle but the belief that there is a world that you can't see. So it, it really invokes your imagination, which is why it's the first one that came up, because it's literally shadow hunters that fight downworlders, fight war, you know? So that was the first thing that I thought of, and that was what I stuck with. You stuck with me, you stick with your guns, you know? And yeah, hope you enjoy the work that I did. 